Eddie Hearn believes that his charge, Anthony Joshua, will knock Kubrat Pulev and Tyson Fury out. And I know what you're going to say, and I agree with you. Well, Eddie Hearn would say that, wouldn't he? <laughs> he's a promoter, and he's Anthony Joshua's promoter, so obviously he's going to talk him up, and he's going to make out as though AJ's just going to walk through those guys. But I'm going to quote Eddie Hearn anyway. So he said, I actually messaged him and said, you're going to steamroll through these guys. He just replied and said, steamroll, in caps. I think he'd love to stop Fury. Yeah, he knows that Fury is an outstanding fighter and it's going to be very difficult, but you can ask him for yourself. I believe he has bad intentions in those fights and I believe he expects to. I believe he will knock out Kubrat Pulev and Tyson Fury. I think he's ready to start doing a demolition job on these guys. I think he's shown, coming back from the Ruiz Jr. fight, that he has the ability to box and move. That's in the arsenal now, but he still loves knocking people out. And when you see the drills, when you see the pads, and you see that spite in his shots. Anyway, end quote. Those are the words of Eddie Hearn. Well, I've spoken about this in several videos since AJ's loss to Andy Ruiz. So I'll just reiterate what I've said in the past here. Anthony Joshua needs to produce those type of performances again. A lot has changed in the past year or so since that Andy Ruiz loss. Not just in terms of the public perception of Anthony Joshua, because people perceive him as being much more vulnerable now than they did prior to that Ruiz loss. But also some outside the ring things that Anthony Joshua has been involved in and the rise of Tyson Fury. These, have these things have taken some of the popularity away from AJ, okay? The fact that people don't believe in, in him as much as they used to, some of the things he said and done outside of the ring have turned some members of the public off him. And the fact that Tyson Fury, in the eyes of many boxing fans in the UK and around the world, is better than AJ because he's put on dominated excuse me, dominating performances at elite level, whereas AJ never really has. So again, boxing fans are fickle and that's okay. A lot of them are jumping ship over to Tyson Fury because they think that he is the winning horse. In football, they call these people glory supporters or glory hunters. People who support Man United one season and then when they're not doing very well, they jump ship to whoever's doing well that season. <laughs> and you get that in boxing too. So there's a combination of different factors which play into the perception I certainly have that Anthony Joshua is not as popular now as he was prior to June 1st, 2019. You know, he's just as famous or more famous now, but not as popular. That's my perception of it. Now, one way that he can address that issue and get more people back on his bandwagon is by putting in devastating performances. Because if he tries to turn himself into Klitschko 2.0, where it's going to be, you know, jab, jab, grab, jab and move, basically the Ruiz rematch replicated over and over again, his popularity will continue to decline. It will. You see, Anthony Joshua has probably a bigger female following other than maybe Canelo Alvarez. I mean, maybe he's got a bigger female following than Alvarez. I don't know. But even Anthony Joshua's female following have been critical of him. I've spoken to some of these females, right? And females who absolutely, look, you know, they're not really boxing fans. They're just Anthony Joshua fans. But females who were big fans of AJ, when he fought uh, Joseph Parker, I spoke to, to some of them and they were very disappointed in AJ's performance. They didn't understand it. Again, these are casuals. They, don't they didn't understand it because they were drawn to AJ, not just for his looks and his money and his fame and all that kind of stuff, but also because of AJ's devastating knockout wins. You know, this doesn't just appeal to boxing fans because, you know, we like to see, let's be real, brutality in, in the sport of boxing. Obviously, there's limits, but we like to see knockouts, right? But for a lot of, uh, you know, females who are attracted to uh, male boxers, a lot of them are attracted to the, you know, the masculinity of it. And so seeing a guy going in there and dominating other men and knocking them out, 
to some of these women, that's part of the appeal. Whereas when you've got a guy who goes in there and he's a big, strong, muscular guy, but he's moving around the ring from like a short, plump guy, all of a sudden, some of these women are like, well, he doesn't seem that brave. He doesn't seem like, you know, the, the kind of man that I thought he was. Do you understand? This is also happening a little bit. So again, AJ is going to have to produce the kind of exciting performances that we saw from him prior to the Andy Ruiz defeat on June 1st, 2019. And for the most part, again, prior to that defeat, he did produce that other than in the Joseph Parker fight. He produced all these devastating knockouts. He's going to need to go back to that. So what Eddie Hearn is saying about AJ is going to do this and he's going to do that, it's all good in terms of promotional talk. He's going to have to produce it in the ring. He's going to have to do that in order to maintain or build back his popularity and also to make sure that Eddie Hearn's pockets and Barry Hearn's pockets remain filled. <laughs> now, for the Andy Ruiz rematch, yes, he broke records and all that kind of stuff, but that's because of the story behind it. Going forward, if AJ keeps fighting like that, you honestly think he's going to keep breaking box office records? No. You know, I predicted that after the Ruiz loss, the first loss, that AJ's popularity would start to dwindle and, and, and start going down. And I think we've seen that. But I also said that the Ruiz rematch is going to sell very big numbers on pay-per-view. And that happened. It's what happens after the Ruiz rematch. How AJ decides to perform from there on in. Yeah, the, at the height of AJ's popularity, Tyson Fury wasn't WBC World Heavyweight Champion. He hadn't just destroyed Deontay Wilder in one-sided fashion. Yeah, that wasn't the case at the height of AJ's popularity when he was filling out Wembley against Klitschko and all these people. Tyson Fury was, you know, essentially in, uh, what do you want to call it, boxing exile? So he was different then. Now Tyson Fury's on the scene. The situation has changed. So anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments below about all the points I've raised in this video. Is that when I'm out? Join me on Patreon. I upload a minimum of two podcasts every single week, covering a wide variety of controversial topics, as well as live stream Q&A sessions. Take a look on screen right now at some of the podcasts I've produced so far. For just $3 a month, the equivalent of about £2 a month, you get access to all my new podcasts and my entire back catalogue of past podcasts, including my popular Confessions of a Nightclub Bouncer series. You can listen on your computer or on your smartphone or tablet by downloading the Patreon app from the Google Play Store or the App Store for free. The Patreon app also allows you to download each podcast in MP3. For less than the price of a cup of coffee, you get access to dozens of hours of exclusive content. It's easy to sign up, there's no contract, and you can cancel at any time. So come and join our community of free and critical thinkers by signing up with me here on Patreon today.